she certainly can put on a good show. Uh, she may have said that reluctantly, but the people who watched him were sort of rapturous in talking about it last night. But there is a bit of a difference, I think, between putting on a good show, which has always been a, a gift uh, for Boris. I remember him at university. He, he was sort of blinded people with his uh, skills of oratory. But there's a big difference between that and being able to offer a solution. So it's great to say Chuck Checkers, you know, something that he allegedly toasted at Checkers when they agreed it, uh, and tearing up the backstop, something he was happy to sign up to for many, many months. What is he going to put in his place? And what realistically can he put in his place at this 11th hour and take it to the European Union and get their consent on it and get it through uh, Cabinet and uh, the Houses of Parliament and reassure us all that it's going to work out here in the country? You know, it's just not realistic. You make him sound almost deluded, Gitto. Well, you know, I remember even Gordon Brown, remember him, you know, not great at oratory, but I remember him once whipping up the Labour conference to frenzy, let the nurses nurse, let the teachers teach, let the police protect us and let us be a society again. It sounds great. You leave with a nice warm feeling inside, but what does that mean? Does that mean more money for all of them? It didn't really come. So I think it's, it's, it's Boris, sadly, I think, has gone back into the camp of being a bit of a national treasure, but these days only for uh, a small and perhaps diminishing gang within the Conservative Party and has got away from being the potential great statesman that he was. Most people think that when he had the chance, when he had a crack at one of the great officers of state, he didn't really hack it. He was foreign secretary. This is not you and me, Nick, complaining Mm. that Brexit's not happy. He has sat in cabinet for the last two years as foreign secretary. So if he wasn't happy with the way it was going... Wasn't that the place to change it, not on the stage of the Tory conference uh, here in Birmingham? Got to put it to you, Gitto, and I only went on, I think, one US trip with him. You went all over the world with him. That moment where he says, Chuck Checkers, I've seen that face before. He doesn't deliver that with a great big smile or a great... There seems to be almost a sense of reluctance. What, what do you take from that strange facial expression after he says, Chuck Checkers? I think he's... He's kind of aware of the power that he has when when he has got people, you know, I've got your attention now, I've made you laugh, I've broken, broken down any barriers, you have connected with me emotionally. So this is the moment where I can cash in on that, I can tell you something, I can land a big, big, serious grown-up point. Uh, and he certainly landed that with the people in the hall. He but did. whether they'd all go out today and sort of trash the only deal on the table uh, and jeopardise Brexit so that either we have a second referendum or that we leave without a deal. I don't know. It'd be interesting to ask him today. Is he a disloyal bloke? Um, I think he has his own concept of loyalty. <laughs> I think he <laughs> feels that he's loyal to principles. He's loyal to party. He tells it as it is. Um, he has great confidence in his insights, generally in the past with, with good reason. Mm. Um, but he won't let some sort of I don't know, kind of uh, superficial allegiance uh, overrule what he thinks needs to be said. And he obviously feels that the Brexit that he fought hard for wouldn't have happened without him is not a Brexit that we're going to thank him for. Before I let you go, how close is your friendship now? Do you still speak with him regularly? (laughs) Occasionally.